favorite joyous body part is chest. Yeah. Big fan of uh, classic uh, shapes, classic physique. Hey everyone, this is Alex Portfaza and today I'm with Joel at Metroflex Long Beach. Joel is a unique uh, Australian bodybuilder who's uh, obsessed with the classic forms, classic physique, you can see it from his body. A few days ago I was shooting a Golden Aesthetics Championship and you guys showed a lot of love uh, for Joel and you asked me to get in touch with him and shoot separate video with Joel. So this is why we're here today. We're gonna train, uh, what do you like the most? Chest. One of my favorite. So we're gonna train chest today and uh, during this workout I'm going to talk to Joel. I'm gonna ask him about his training, his nutrition, his general philosophy that stands behind him. Now we can train and we'll see how it goes. Bye. Do you have any training tips or any specific moments that you pay attention to while training chest? It's very simple, but there are still a lot of important things, uh, like making sure that you're using your chest while pressing, because uh, some people they use uh, front deltoids in pressing movement, contracting shoulder plates behind the back, plus uh, shoulders should not be above the chest. If you do that, then Pretty much all activity goes to shoulders, not your chest. That's why I don't go heavy, so that I can engage uh, chest instead of using assisting body parts. It's much harder. Where does the bar go? Somewhere in the lower part, middle or upper part? Somewhere in the middle. But when I work on the incline bench, then I can go on the upper part. Just because of angle, it, it, it feels more natural. Flat bench, middle part. And what about grip? How wide do you go? Uh, 90 degrees in the lower part. But if you go too narrow, then you concentrate on your arms more. How many sets do you do and what is your rep range? Usually I do five sets. First two sets would be uh, warming up sets of 20 reps, for example. And then I have three working sets uh, between 10 and 15 reps. And you prefer bench press, not dumbbells, right? Being in old school. I do both. Most important thing to use uh, free weights. How do you concentrate on uh, activating your chest? I used to hate bench pressing. Before, about a few years ago, I tried to bench press like I use uh, dumbbells. When you try to imitate uh, dumbbells going closer to each other. When you, when you press dumbbells, uh, they, they come closer, right? In the upper part of the movement. So. I'm thinking about doing the same thing uh, while pressing the bar. Mentally, I'm thinking about getting my hands closer to each other. And this helps a lot. Cool. Круто. No need to make up fancy shit if you're doing the basics the right way. For example, simple movement as dips. If you go all the way down, like to the bottom, and then you press and you stretch with no momentum, no, no nothing. You don't need any extra weight. Your body weight is enough. Then, then it works. If you concentrate on your chest. It's funny to see how people think uh, that they do the same thing as you do, but they're doing completely different things. Even the same exercises. By changing some angles, uh, fighting resistance, momentum, it's critical where your legs go, how you lower your upper body while doing the dips. Makes it completely different. I've noticed that last moments you you were just wrapping up instead of uh, squeezing your chest.
What is the backbone of your training philosophy? What are your main principles? If we don't go down to muscle groups, then the most important thing is uh, range of motion and contraction. And in each exercise I go by feel. It's very important for me to feel an exercise. If I don't do it, if I don't feel it, then I'm going to do some variations. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change an exercise or change the exercises around. That's critical for me to, to feel an exercise, to feel a pump. So no pump, no, no exercise? Yeah, basically. Because pump is some kind of an indicator that shows if, uh, if the muscle uh, is working or not. Can you give me an example of your regular training split? Sure, let's see. On Monday I would do legs in the morning and chest in the evening. Uh, on Tuesday I would do back in the morning and uh, shoulders in the evening. I always train twice a day, yeah. And the third day I would do arms and abs in the evening. And then another circle one more time. So every day I have different muscle groups. And what about day offs? I don't have day offs. I take them very rarely. Like uh, once a week? No, less than that. Once a month? I don't even remember when I had it last time. You're saying that you're a natural athlete. And I'm sure you heard that if you don't take any enhancing performance uh, stuff, then you need more time for recovery. How do you manage to train so often being a natural? How do you have enough time? How does your body recover by training twice a day? How is it even possible? I'm not trying to provoke you, I'm just asking you a question that is coming from my audience. I know what to expect from them, you know? Well, you know, I used to train once a day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and etc. At some point I realized that my chest, for example, Monday day, uh, my chest recovered completely by the third day, so why not train it once again? So I, I took less uh, rest time from seven days to three days and it went okay. My muscles just got used to it. Most of the guys who's asking me these questions uh, are beginners, you know, they only train for two or three years and or they train but they're not being consistent, you know. If you don't have consistency in your training split and one muscle group is being trained uh, twice a week and another one is having seven days for recovery, of, of course, the one that you're getting back to is going to be sore. But if you're being consistent on every muscle group, then muscles getting used to it. For example, today my chest was still sore since last workout, but I got through it and the training session went just fine. Okay, can you say us a few words about supplements? What do you take? No supplements neither. The only thing that I might take is creatine. And I only take it when I know I didn't have enough red meat. That's the only supplement I take. And how much creatine do you take? From 5 to 10 grams. How many hours do you sleep a night? Well, I try to get 7 or 8 hours. But uh, it doesn't happen very often right now because I have 11 months daughter. And she wakes, uh, wakes up a lot during the night time. But I, I think that I get enough recovery. Even having five or six hours a night, that's fine for me. I feel okay with that. I think it's important uh, what your lifestyle is as well. If uh, your workouts and this whole thing is uh, your main thing in the life and you don't have a whole lot in above to that, yeah, that's it. That's all what I do. Uh, the uh, gym where I work and where I train, place where I spend uh, most of my day. And it's only a few blocks away from the place where I live. I know that not a whole lot of people have this luxury. And what about those days when you don't feel like it, when you don't feel like training? Do you still go train? Yes, I had... Uh, and uh, some experience when those days uh, turn out to be the best uh, workout days ever. So you got to push yourself and you got to make it to the gym. How did this whole thing started with you being a fan of 70s? Was it like that all the time or was it something that you came to during the uh, workouts? 
definitely uh, this is something that I did from the very beginning. I never wanted to be uh, like uh, modern bodybuilders. And I knew that I would never be able to be anything like that because I knew it's not possible. I, uh, I haven't idolized, but I kind of liked uh, the looks of the Hollywood uh, actors like Brad Pitt or Leo DiCaprio. I like that general look, you know, from head to toe. While being a little kid, I, I had some issues uh, accepting my external appearance. Actually, this is the reason why I went uh, to the gym, why I started working out. So, I don't remember what, what, what that movie was called, but maybe Predator. And I enjoyed the alpha look of uh, Arnold in that movie a lot. Everything about him was great, you know. And not only body, but his, uh, his uh, look, his skin, his uh, hair, he, the color of the skin, everything. And that's what I wanted. That's why I tried to imitate, after all. Let's go down to this uh, head-to-toe thing. What exactly do you mean by saying that? I mean everything. That's partly, this is the reason why I don't want to take steroids, because I'm afraid of the side effects that can ruin my look, my skin. I don't want to have... Uh, any acne issues, any side effects, I'm afraid of that. That's why I don't even think about it. I treat it like a statement. The way we look, it's a statement that we do. And some people don't accept that, but that's the way it is in real life. So for me, it's very important. Plus, I'm also a big fan of 80s. Wall Street guys, uh, my hair, hairstyle, it's coming from that. So. Uh, Wall Street 80s, bodybuilding 70s. What about glasses? Do you even need glasses? Yeah, I've got a medical condition, but I picked them myself. You also said that you have very pale skin. Is this so? Yeah, it's true. I spend a lot of time under the sun. How much time? Every day? A couple of hours. So let's sum up. You have hair from 80s, uh, body shape from 70s, suntan from 70s. What about your clothing? Yeah, it's another thing. I have to look for my clothing. It's not so easy to get stuff like that. I have to do some research. I'm a big fan of retro clothing. Nowadays, people are obsessed with brands. But if you go to, for example, Nike shop, you got to be ready then. You'll be wearing a shirt that uh, another 20,000 people wear. So if you want to stand out and you want to look unique, it's not going to work while uh, no one walks around in 80s or 70s looks, right? And you also said that you take your shots with the film cameras, right? Yeah, that's true. I never take pictures with my phone. I, I don't have a, a single selfie, to be honest with you. Zero. Uh, there is something about it, you know? Especially if I try to imitate 70s looks uh, from head to toe, and I take selfie, it's just out of, out of range, you know. No one would take uh, selfies in 70s, it's just not possible with uh, film cameras. My whole purpose is to create the illusion that the picture was really taken in 70s, and if people really think so, then my mission is accomplished. Okay, let's talk about nutrition now, we haven't spoken about that yet. A uh, couple of days ago, you told me that you eat whole eggs and you eat a lot of them, like 17 or 20 whole eggs every day with the yolks, with everything, with cholesterol, everything. <laughs> yeah. What else? Well, a lot of people get rid of uh, chicken skin while they eat chicken uh, because of the fat. It's not like I'm uh, a big fan of fat. No, I'm just trying to eat natural food, you know. If we talk about sausage, for example, and uh, uh, manufacturers uh, infusing some artificial fats in their products, then of course I don't eat that. But if we talk about cows like beef and uh, uh, pork or chicken, I eat the whole thing. Like uh, I try to eat uh, wild fish. I also heard that uh, salmon that is grown on manufacturers is not having uh, omega or it has like neglecting amounts of 
Omega uh, comparing to wild fish. I think it's true. It's just, it tastes the same, but in reality uh, it has no uh, nutrition, no minerals that was supposed to be there. Yeah, you know, uh, nowadays a lot of people, they are obsessed with the macronutrients, uh, micronutrients. That's a good thing from one side, but from another side, people don't care where these products are coming from. And I think it's very important, especially for bodybuilders, because it, it, it's affecting uh, testosterone level a lot. I truly believe that uh, people of uh, 70s and 80s they had much higher natural levels of testosterone just because they had uh, farm-raised uh, chicken and beef. How do you address haters, if you have them, of course? I mean, those people who refuse to believe you, uh, that you're natural. If you guys DM'd me, uh, you know, and I thought that it would be much more people, uh, they told me, why do you lie about you being natural? Trust me, you'll have so many more haters on my channel because Russian people, they just refuse, refuse uh, to believe and they hate people uh, being natural or people saying that they're natural. I think that expectations are guilty in that because industry is pushing these looks uh, when, uh, you know, I have some young newbies, you know, in the gym who come across me and they like, what do you take? What do you inject? What do you this and that? and they just refuse to believe that uh, someone uh, being as big as I am is natural because, uh, you know, drugs became so affordable, you know, they are accessible. So youngsters, they just start taking these drugs uh, before even study training, you know, and then they see me and of course it's hard for them to believe that someone really worked out for 10 or 15 years to get there you said that you competed in natural federation is that so yeah i did a couple of natural shows and i did the ifbb arnold classic show in australia and what did you place i didn't place it was an amateur show but if i if i would have won then i would have got my uh, pro card so uh, you didn't place in your class at all? No, nothing. I don't think the judges even looked at me. Man, that sucks. Well, yeah, but it just proves that my philosophy, you know, but uh, it's important how people treated me, how audience uh, supported me and cheered for me, you know. Uh, that's what, what is more important for me. It was enough for me. Because the guy who won this whole thing, I don't even remember his name and I don't think anyone remembers his name. It's not like I'm trying to degrade his uh, achievements, but that's the way it is. That's the reality. Okay, so uh, modern bodybuilding is not something that you're interested in, but do you even follow uh, the pro shows? Like, who's your favorite bodybuilder? Do you have any? I only like Brandon Curry. Thanks, man. There you have it, guys. Joel, Australian bodybuilder, who's standing out, who's uh, having these classic forms. I'm pretty sure that he's an interesting person to follow, so I will leave his Instagram links in the description box below. My name is Alex Faza. Take care, guys.